Today we are going to compare this 2021 Ford Bronco to uh, this 2021 Toyota Tacoma and see how different are these rigs really. And if you're familiar with the Toyota products and you're thinking, oh that Bronco, it's just super huge and wide and whatever, well you might be surprised. Let's dig in. Under the hood of the Tacoma, we have a 3.5 liter V6, non-turbo, 278 horsepower and 265 pound-feet of torque. This is a fairly complicated motor for Toyota, being that it's direct injected, it's got dual road cam, it does have port injection for cleaning the valves, but it still has a little bit of that old school Toyota-ness with the fan clutch being mechanical for cooling and most of the other bits can be found in the previous generation Tacoma, including the manual transmission. Let's take a look at the Bronco. Under the hood of the Bronco, we have the 2.7 liter twin turbo V6, which as you can see, they did not provide a pretty cover and it appears that it's a spaghetti mess of hoses and complicated bits. This is a pretty high-tech motor. It's got a variable rate turbo or two of those. It's got a fancy cooling system, tons of electronics. It's got these little louvers that are automated for uh, closing off and opening the vents to the intercooler as well as the radiator. This is definitely high-tech, more than that one. However, it does produce a lot more power. 310 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque on regular unleaded fuel and 330 horsepower and 415 pound-feet of torque with premium fuel and you can tune them really easily if you want more being that it's a turbo motor. This is definitely going to be the winner when it comes to sheer raw power. Toyota probably still holds the winning position for just long-term reliability and simplicity in comparison. The wheelbase is vastly different as this is a pickup truck and it has a 127 inch wheelbase, whereas the Bronco is a 116 inch wheelbase. Definitely for trails where it requires tight maneuvering, the Bronco, the clear winner here. Now, if you're talking to Toyota 4Runner, they're gonna be very close to the Bronco four door, which is gonna kind of negate the wheelbase difference. How wide is the Bronco? This thing looks so wide and fat and stubby, and most people think it is crazy wider than the Toyota Tacoma or the Toyota 4Runner, and they're somewhat true. So if you get a Sasquatch version, that really pushes those tires out, the flares are larger, and it gives you an overall width at the tires of 80 inches. Now that is the widest part of the truck. From there, the body is actually 70 inches wide, meaning that those tires stick out about five inches on each side, which is great for trails because it keeps your body away from those obstacles and those tires help push you away. The mirrors are slightly wider than the body and those are about 73 inches wide. Now the Tacoma might look narrower and it is somewhat narrower, from the wheels and the fender flares at the widest part is 75 inches and then the body is actually slightly wider than the Bronco. It's about 71 inches but the mirrors are the exact same, 73 inches wide. So if you're concerned about a Bronco fitting on a trail versus a Tacoma or a 4Runner, you're basically the same width and the only variance is going to be those wheels, how far they're sticking out. And you can buy the Bronco with the lesser trim packages or the narrower flares, the, the more offset wheels that makes the whole thing much narrower. They're closer to 76 inches, so it's really comparable to what the Tacoma is. However, I do prefer the Bronco with the tires sticking out further just to push that body away from obstacles and probably have less potential for trail damage with that slightly wider width However, that being said, I would not go wider than 80 inches, so you'd really want to watch what type of wheel and tire packages you get to push the width out. Which vehicle is heavier? Well, the Bronco wins 5,100 pounds versus the Tacoma 4,500 pound curb weight. Now, the Bronco does have more off-road goodies that add weight, such as those big 35 inch tires that don't measure 35 inches, and the different skid plates and off-road bits. However, it is a pretty heavy vehicle. 
The ground clearance under the Toyota Tacoma, the lowest hanging part, is actually the exhaust crossover pipe as well as the rear differential, which are right about nine inches off the ground. Now this is in desperate need of a skid plate for off-roading because this is really close to the breakover and it is the lowest hanging thing. This is definitely the poorest design that Toyota has with the bottom side of the Tacoma as far as ground clearance goes. Let's take a look at the Bronco and see how it looks. Underneath the Bronco, the lowest parts are this cross member right here that sits about 11 inches on the Sasquatch version. Now the fuel tank is actually the next vulnerable spot. This is only 12 inches off the ground without a skid plate, meaning when you add a skid plate, you're probably gonna lose another inch of ground clearance, which will probably put it close to 11 inches of ground clearance. I think this is gonna get hit a lot. So you want a really good gas tank skid plate. I would not off-road one of these without doing something to address these get fuel tanks. The next low point is these welded on control arms for the rear suspension. They're right at 12 inches and it's gonna be really level with the gas tank once you put a skid plate on it. So it's probably not gonna be a huge problem, but they do hang down quite low compared to the frame height is almost 16 inches on these things. So you can kind of get an idea. They uh, hang down quite a lot, talking four inches. The lowest point on the Bronco is the rear differential at 10 and a half inches. And then you have the rear suspension. So let's take a look at that and see how low those are. The lowest parts on this truck is the bottom of the rear diff at 10 and a half inches. This rear control arm mount at 10 and a half inches. And then this shock mount, eight and a half inches off the ground. That thing is gonna get hammered on trails and it would be very wise to have a good skid plate on that thing because it is down really low. So let's take a look and see how that compares to the Toyota's rear axle setup. All right, underneath the Tacoma, that rear diff is nine inches of clearance, but check out how Toyota does their shock mounts. So that shock mark right there offers nine and a half inches of ground clearance versus the Ford, which is eight and a half inches. And this is sitting on 31 inch tires versus 35 inch tires. If we put the same 35s under this, it'd be significantly better ground clearance. And you can see this axle tube, how clear it is and limited of obstructions to get you caught up off-road. I would say I like the Toyota design definitely better. The other problem with the Toyota 4Runner and Tacoma is if you do want to run a larger tire, you're pretty limited. You can go up to about a 33 inch tire if it's pretty narrow and the right wheel offset. However, a lot of guys are gonna have to chop the actual steel body mount for these trucks to actually get full clearance with full compression and full turning. That's crazy to have to do some invasive cutting just to fit a 33 inch tire in my opinion. Now, if you wanna go up to a 35, that gets really invasive with the body mount, with the actual fender, the inner fender. You're gonna be doing some serious cutting on this thing. And I don't know that I would be excited about doing that, especially on a new truck. That's where the Bronco is fantastic. Factory 35s and realistically, it wouldn't be that difficult to go up to a 37 with cutting that's probably comparable to the Tacoma trying to fit a 33. So definite nice benefit with the Bronco. Now the Bronco has a front differential that's about eight and a quarter inch ring gear and the Toyota is an eight inch ring gear. They're very, very similar. The Toyota has been pretty well proven to be able to hold up to a 35 inch tire fairly well and I've even seen guys run up to a 40 inch tire on those trucks but at that point you're probably pushing the mechanical limits of that differential. Now the Bronco it comes with a 35 inch tire that's going to be pretty strong setup from the factory with that size of ring gear and the gear ratio it has with a 35. You could probably go up to a 37 and still be pretty durable and not risk a lot of damage 
on the trail with components. Now the rear differential on the Tacoma, on these new Tacomas is 8.75 inch ring gear, which is slightly bigger than the Bronco with its 8.66 inch ring gear in the back. So slight advantage to the Tacoma. The Tacoma does have an optional rear locking differential if you get the TRD off-road version. Ours does not, so it is open differentials front and rear. The Bronco, of course, comes with an optional front and rear locking differential. So as far as traction and off-road advantage there, huge win for the Bronco. It also offers a factory differential gear ratio of 4.7, which is perfectly matched for those 35 inch tires. Whereas with the Toyota, you can get a 390 gear ratio or a 430 gear ratio. And realistically, if you go up in tire size, really past a 32 or 33 inch tire, you're gonna to wanna to re-gear that. So the Tacoma cost of modifying is significantly more than a Bronco, especially if you're gonna to try to run both trucks on 35 inch tires, you're gonna end up having to pay for re-gearing the differentials and adding a front locker or a front and rear locker on the Toyota. And that could cost, no, well, four to $5,000. So huge advantage here for the Bronco as far as the differentials go and the gear ratio. Now the Tacoma, when it comes to off-road low range gearing, the transfer case has a 2.57 to one gear ratio, which this is a ratio that Toyota's used for decades now. It's not that great, especially compared to the Bronco, where you can get a 3.06 to one gear ratio. That's a huge advantage for being able to go slower off-road. The crawl ratio is what typically is referred to as far as how slow can it go off-road. And the Tacoma with an automatic is a 36 to one crawl ratio, and the manual is a 44 to one crawl ratio. It's pretty subpar. Realistically, a 50 to one crawl ratio is what I consider the baseline for doing general trail usage. And anything worse than 50 to one being less than that is gonna be hard to drive if it's a manual and it's gonna heat up that transmission if it's automatic because that torque converter is gonna have to be uh, taking up all that slack and the lack of gearing for it. This Bronco here with the manual gets you a 95 to one crawl ratio. I mean, more than double what the Tacoma is as far as it will go twice as slow as a Tacoma at idle off-road. In the automatic, it's 68 to one crawl ratio. Once again, you're talking twice about what the Tacoma is at 36 to one. Those higher crawl ratio numbers allow you a lot more control off-road because you can go a lot slower. If you're driving a manual transmission, you're less likely to stall and just you can crawl and creep over stuff. And if you're an automatic, you do have that torque converter, so you're not gonna stall out, but it's gonna work that torque converter a lot less and you're gonna have uh, much greater control and you're not gonna heat up that transmission nearly as much on that more technical train and certainly rock crawling. You can upgrade the transfer case in a Tacoma, but there's nothing that's bolted in. It's highly modified, custom type of work, needs new drive lines, custom cross member, interior work. It is a very involved process. If you're looking for a truck to go rock crawling and technical train, Bronco, clear winner here. Tacoma will be fine for overland type of stuff and really light trail use. But if you wanna go up to next level of trail stuff, it's gonna be a lot easier route to go with the Bronco. The steering tie rod, inner and outer, is nearly the exact same diameter on the Tacoma and the Bronco, which does give some concern for the Bronco because I have seen the Tacomas bend those tie rods like little twigs with 37 inch tires. And I would be definitely concerned with the Bronco running a 37 inch tire off-road that your steering setup is not going to survive very well. 35 is probably the maximum for that tie rod setup based on what I've seen on the Tacoma trucks, in my opinion. However, Ford does have a Ford Performance part of a new steering rack and tie rod ends for these trucks that are coming out. It'll be really interesting to see 
what size and how much beefier that is and it's likely going to coincide with the release of the Raptor Bronco. So this one does have a nice upgrade path if you do decide to run 37s or if you are having issues with uh, strength on this truck. The Tacoma does have similar type of upgrade options with larger rack and pinion that you can swap in from the Tundra and the Land Cruiser and you can get aftermarket tie rod ends. So both the steering setups, I would say, are kind of really, really similar as far as overall strength and durability. Now, the suspension setup is very similar between the two trucks. You're basically an upper lower control arm. The biggest difference with the setup with the suspension is on the Tacoma here. It's maybe difficult to see, but the back here has a bump stop on the lower control arm. So you can see the Toyota suspension, upper, lower control arm, coilover type shock setup, uh, really similar design setup to the Bronco. Now the overall diameter of the shock, factory shock, is just under two inches, one and three quarter inch diameter shock versus the Bronco is about two and a quarter inch diameter shock. So Bronco is definitely a, a more beefy uh, coilover type setup from the factory. And the Toyota does offer a more off-road version with the TRD Pro. And that comes with the Fox shocks, which are beefier, better shock. Now the interesting thing with these trucks is they both sit with the CV joint pretty much flat. So it rides basically perfectly flat. If you lift these IFS trucks, it'll tip the CV angle at a steeper angle, um, which on the Sasquatch version, you can see it has a slight angle to it. I'm sure the standard version of the Bronco, those CVs are basically perfectly flat. Now, as you lift it, you only can go so far before you start having issues with wearing those CV boots and also just with wearing those CV joints out. I think that the Sasquatch version could probably go up another inch, maybe two inch on the max without having issue with the CVs. The Toyota can go up easy two or three inches and not have an issue with uh, the CV joints. Now the control arms on the Bronco are a bit longer. The Bronco lower control arm is about 20 inches from the ball joint to the inner uh, mount whereas the Tacoma is around 14 inches, which makes sense because they're trying to get a little bit more suspension travel. You just need the width on an independent suspension truck to be able to get to that range of motion. Now, the CV axles from the Bronco to the Toyota Tacoma, the outer diameter measures on the CV axle measures four and a quarter inches, and it's almost dead exactly the same from the Bronco to the Tacoma. The inner is exactly the same. The outer ball on the CV axle on the inside is four inches and four inches. These are really, really, really similar. And the CV shaft between the two CVs is the exact same. It's one and 1 1.3 uh, inches in diameter. So that's really interesting to me because that follows what Toyota's long-term thing has been, which is basically you way over build your components and you sell it with much smaller hardware where it's durability to its um, capability is, is really, really low bar threshold compared to what they equip it with. You know, if, with this truck with 31 inch tires and the same size CV axles as the Bronco, it's never gonna break. The Bronco with 35s and the same size hardware as the Tacoma, you're pushing the mechanical limits of that, those components a lot more with the Bronco. And the Tacoma has been pretty well proven with the CV axles to be able to withstand a 35 inch tire, but that's about the limit of those CV axles. If you go up to a 37, you're gonna be running into some issues. I would have concerns with the Bronco, as is trying to run over a 35 inch tire. If you're going to run 
on really technical trails and rock crawling, I think you're gonna be pushing those components a lot. Will they hold up? Possibly, for how long? Time will tell, but you definitely aren't overbuilt compared to the Tacoma in the regard of the front suspension. Now, they, there are aftermarket companies like RCV that make custom chromoly shaft CV axles for both the Tacoma and the Bronco, and both of them are rated with a lifetime warranty for up to a 40 inch tire. So if you did decide to run your Bronco or your Tacoma with say a 37 inch tire, you would have an upgrade path to resolve an issue of braking CV axles. Overall, I think either of these trucks would be best to keep within the parameters of its designed strength and not break parts until you could upgrade everything all together. And that way you have a reliable rig out on the trail and you can have fun doing the things you want to do, not crawling underneath it and fixing it in the mud. In conclusion, the Tacoma versus the Bronco. I really like that Ford integrated many of the off-road components that make for a tr capable truck off-road into this platform. That's fantastic. Toyota basically hasn't changed anything in decades. And they built good stuff, but they just don't change it and they don't really conform to the enthusiasts as far as the more trail capability of these trucks. So which one is easier to modify? The Rocco, by far. It does have some shortcomings. Realistically, the componentry in a lot of ways, especially the front suspension, is basically the exact same as the Tacoma. However, the Bronco gives you a transfer case that you can work with off-road. In a Tacoma, that's gonna cost you thousands of dollars and really involved to upgrade the transfer case. Being able to stay with the factory lock differentials in the 470 gears, really nice on the Bronco. On the Tacoma, if you go larger tires, you're gonna have to pay to re-gear, add lockers, it's gonna be really involved even fitting larger tires. You're gonna to have to do a lot of modifications with the wheel well, uh, different offset wheels. It's gonna be more involved, whereas the Bronco, it's already set up for 35s, and you could possibly go higher, larger diameter tires. But keep in mind, this thing is gonna be pushing the mechanical limits with a 37 inch tire, and you probably want to seriously look at upgrading components either uh, right away or at some point if you do go beyond a 35 inch tire. So which one would I have? Both, because they're awesome. <laughs> the Tacoma is my wife's truck and she loves it. Although I don't know if we'll modify it. And the Bronco would be just a lot of fun because the roof comes off and it's just a really, it's built to be fun, which is awesome. And the Toyota is built to just be reliable, which is also awesome. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. I will show you how I would build and order a Ford Bronco and how you can get a discount on one of them if you custom order it. Give us a thumbs up. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.